Hey everyone, it's David Trisivia, and today we're going to be starting a new series I'm going to be working on. The focus of this series is showing the little things you can do to really make your grade stand out. Now in color correction, you quickly get used to balancing your shots and setting the look and stuff, but the next big step after that is figuring out what little touches you can do to really take your grade to the next level. So these are things like, you know, figuring out where to, to make an extra little pop or when to pop a skin tone or fix a problem or desaturate or whatever, just like little tiny tweaks and parts of the image that really direct your eye and make what looks like a tiny difference in terms of what the, you're actually doing lead to a big difference in how people watch and perceive your video. And so we're just going to go through this video. Um, this is a purity ring, begin again, uh, a video I did a few weeks ago from Young Replicant. Uh, this video is absolutely gorgeous, uh, really beautiful. You should really go watch it. Can't recommend it enough. There's a lot of moments and scenes in this video where the director and I really nailed in on a couple of things to try and enhance different parts of the video and make things pop and, and really get the point across. Things like this flesh sack and, and uh, skin tones and the nuns, what they're wearing and stuff. So I'm going to go through some of these, these little bits and pieces and tricks and techniques that we did to sort of to make this grade stand out as much as possible. I'm not going to be talking about how we got these looks or how we balance things out because those are things you sort of have to experience to go through it and uh, this video is not really about that. This is about taking a finished shot and doing the extra little bit of polish that makes it as great as possible. So let's go ahead and dig in. Um, so some of these things are really simple and they seem obvious so I mean here's some you know just a shot of some food on a plate and so I've got this one little slash of light here that adds a little bit of contrast a little bit of warmth that just makes this flesh here pop out just a little bit more so it doesn't get lost as the shadows cross it we do the same thing here with uh, these details here so it seems like there's another beam of light coming into the left of this carafe a uh, little stuff like that helps bring the image across uh here we are uh so we've got the organist um in this shot here and you can see as the sun comes in the skin becomes warm and so I've got this here you can see just barely adding a little bit more life to his skin so we get that really great contrast between the blue and the orange of his skin additionally here taking up the highlights a little bit to increase the the effect of the Sun coming through and then as we pan over this also brings those light beams and makes them really punch you can also shape light beams a lot, so here's the opening shot in the video, you know, and uh, the shot as it stands is sort of flat. By adding this little bit of gradient here, we can draw the image in. You know, vignettes don't have to just be circles. Um, there are any part of darkening the shot to sort of angle your eye to where you want it to go. This We take down this corner, and you instantly go like this with your eye, and that really enhances the scene. So let's skip ahead. So here's a shot of our nuns running across this field. Really beautiful field in England. But uh, we had a lot of strange tones and stuff in this and we also wanted to keep the, the levels down and, and compress the contrast some. So I brought down you know some of the highlights here so they're not as bad. And a big thing here is so these nuns dresses tend to go a little bit infrared and get some uh, reds and magentas in them. And uh, they're supposed to be slate gray so a big thing is selecting these with uh, HSL qualifiers which you can see here and uh, once you select them you know doing our desaturation down to just a little bit and we get the nice slate gray look back another thing that works really well with fields and grass in particular is adding a little bit of highlights it adds a lot of punch to the grass but of course this introduced the problem so we had to take down those highlights in the sky right here and you can see what that looks like here this is just an HSL qualifier um, using just a luminous channel and uh, selecting just a little bit of it and you know increasing the gamma and the gain of those areas of the image. Let's take a look here with our nuns peeking around the corner. They had a lot of bleed initially in the uh, habits of the nuns so we had to desaturate them to get some of the green and some of the blue out. You can see in particular here so this is this is that blue that was bleeding in from the sky or reflecting off something and so by just desaturating that we Sort of restore it back to this nice neutral color and uh, again we've got these highlights which really adds that extra little dynamic especially to here on her face and again this is just that same HSL qualifier particularly in the Luma channel do a little bit of boost and it makes a huge difference in the image here um, making sure we have a consistent shirt on this character um, that's 
the right color tone and also has the right sort of grunginess was something that we really uh, went through. Um, making sure our, our uh, flora was the right color tone and had the right saturation and selecting that with just an HSL qualifier. So a lot of these little tweaks are about focusing on just a certain part of the image here. We had a little bit too much green still, so I added some more brown. Um, you can see especially here what I've done on this shirt. So like on uh, this shot, we had this shirt that was way too red um, with a little, you know, blue in it. So we had to make sure that shifted back to that sort of burnt browny orange look. And so this again is just another HSL qualifier, um, making sure we're selecting just this shirt as much as we can. And then we just, you know, shift the offset and uh, a little bit of colors over here in the gamma. And uh, we've got this nice rusty looking shirt and we make sure to keep that consistent throughout the video. Now this flesh pod, for lack of a better term, is a, a good example of a lot you can do to uh, enhance what an image is going to look like. So let me show you what we started with here. So this is Alexa. Um, colors aside, and let me go ahead and bring in my primaries so that we can at least be looking at something similar. Okay, so uh, this is the image as it comes in. You can see the flesh pod is a, it's a great practical effect. This is a, a real creation. Uh, it was actually shot on set. Um, but it's sort of, you know, the same color and uh, the dew on it looks great, but, you know, it, it looks like a single sort of creepy looking hunk of plastic. And now Alex, the director, um, he wanted us to make sure that we enhance this and sort of show blood pooling down at the bottom so this gets a little bit darker and a little bit more magenta and it levels out at the top and then also to make sure that we pop out these other pods as we look at them so they're really punching through so we've done a lot here um this time or this node graph right here is a mess but we'll go through it so we've got our basic you know highlights that we've affected which adds to the do on here um but this is our main stuff here and this is about what we do to this Flush pot. And so we'll, I'll go through these. Um, so our initial one, again, these are all just HSL qualifiers. And uh, we've gotten pretty lucky in that it's selecting most of them um, because this shot is fairly monochromatic with just the uh, flesh tones and the flora colors. So on this one, which is just the HSL qualifier, we've increased the saturation, we've set the color, we set the gamma and the gain to make sure we're at the right levels to really pop these. Uh, but this is the key one, this next node here that's in the line. And so again, this is the same selection here. Um, but what I've done is I added two masks. One is this tracked circle mask, which is just to make sure that we're only really focusing on this flesh pod and not the other ones. But more important is this gradient mask right here, which you get like this. And what this node is doing is it's darkening down. You can see here my lift has been brought way down. Um, to add a little bit of depth to the flesh pod so that as we pan around it, we get you know that effect of blood pooling on one half. So you can see we go from this sort of fairly flat plastic looking thing to suddenly this dynamic, uh, heavily lit, you know, the sun's over here and then the flesh is way down here, uh, flesh pod. And so that really has a huge effect in terms of making this look a lot more real. Um, things beyond that, we uh, took this here and did the opposite on the other side. So this is again another circle and then another gradient mask, but we're doing the opposite side of it. So we are now brightening this to add even more to that effect. So as we pan around, you know, we've got very clearly more light coming on. We desaturate slightly because the blood is draining down and making this much richer than the top. And the effect is really dynamic. And so now we've got this great looking gross flesh pod. Uh, with just these three simple nodes and the rest is just cleaning stuff up. So here's an interior shot here as we wheel this woman through the, the castle. Um, we again had an issue just like in the exteriors here with the nuns with their habits turning blue. Um, so again, we've just added this node right here with an HSL qualifier that's sort of selecting both the habits and the dresses to desaturate both of them and get that slate gray and this sort of pure off-white color back. Um, as opposed to the, the more blue and red and blue-green on the habits originally. We've also gone and uh, adjusted the highlights to sort of add a little pink back in her face. We're not getting so warm. And here again is the, another Luma qualifier to really punch up that those light beams come through the window.
So here's a good example of another trick you can use to enhance what's already been shot. This is another one Alex specifically asked for when we were working on the video. Um, so this is the girl buried in the ground and they're digging her up. But the problem with this shot was the original version, which we'll go take a look at right now, um, the girl isn't buried particularly deep. And so Alex wanted to really enhance this and make it look like she was, in fact, much deeper than they actually buried her. Um, so let's go ahead and copy this primary and paste this in. So we're at least a little bit, you can see the, you know, it's, there's not a lot of depth to this. She's right there on the surface. So how do we get around this? So let's go back to our version. Again, most of these nodes aren't doing too much. This is adding highlights to sort of increase the contrast here. Um, this is a little slight green adjustment and then, you know, final cleanup here. But what's key is this layer here, which uh, is just a mask that's right on this hole. And uh, what we're doing with it is very simple. Um, you can see it's aligned more or less with the hole and we're just, you know, dropping the lift down um, and the gain down so that, you know, the hole looks deeper. Uh, we also adding a little bit of blue and a little bit of green to this to uh, get the effect of like a farther down pit and uh, losing some of the light. Uh, I didn't desaturate this, but that's something you could also do. And the hole, because of this, looks a lot deeper. The mud looks a lot, you know, muddier instead of this, like, dirt. And you get this effect that's a lot more dynamic than what the original shot, as seen on set, would look like. Okay, this shot right here we're going to take a look at, because there's a lot of things going on, and I think makes this a really pretty composition. And a, a lot of really pretty color tones here. This this green is very muted. There's a lot of blue in it, especially down here. Except, you know, it's offset by these yellow leaves here, which I really love the look of. Um, the rust-colored shirt, and then as he pulls the girl out, she's a little bit more bluer. Um, has a more purple tone to it. So let's take a look at exactly how we built this. Um, okay, so here's our shot as we started. Um, we've got the 709 LUT on, which takes it back to what they saw on the camera. Um... As a side note, this was Alexa XT ProRes 4x4 XQ, shot on Hawk Anamorphics at 4K. Uh, so this is our 709 conversion, and here we are with, uh, this is our primary, so sort of get it down to the relative working window that we want. Uh, we added our highlights here, which is another just Luma qualifier. Uh, we can see it like this, and it, it's very subtle. We select the bright parts of the image that we want increase the gain so that gives us a little bit more dy dynamic and really offsets this dying grass and some of the sky. Uh, right here is our big color tone shift for the foliage and I do a lot of this in the hue versus hue so this is selecting you know the more or less the green hues and by lifting this up you know I move it more towards the yellow tones down takes it more to the blues. Um, let's put it back where it was and so that does a lot in sort of washing this out and making this foliage look a little bit more dead. There's also some slight color tweaks here. We're a little bit more pushed up towards red, uh, maybe some pink and orange in there, and there's some slight, you know, kind of gain adjustments. We'll go on along this node down here. You can see this is the corrector on his shirt, bringing that back into that rusty orange color from this more red pink. This is the big one right here. So what I've done is take a, some of these like very narrow, very green greens and shifted them more yellow. So now we've got this way over the top, almost fall look at the moment. But um, it adds a lot of life to the leaves here. Um, paradoxically, by bringing this yellow in, we get a lot of interesting play between instead of you know a more uniform look, there's now a lot of variation in this, which helps to frame the action going on down here. This adds some blue back into it. So this is a really sloppy HSL. Um, it's not supposed to be accurate. It's just supposed to sort of select things generally and hope that we get the stuff that we want. And uh, when we select this with, again, the HSL qualifier, we add a little bit of blue. Um, you can see there's some down here in the lift and a little bit down here in the gain. And that uh, helps to tone down some of the really extreme yellows and some of the really bright greens. We clean this all up here. This is a big gamma gain lift adjustment we add again add some more blues um, to bring this back down and take some of the edge off that orange and yellow and finally we do a little bit to clean up you can see this most effectively here at the end to get some of those red out of here because we've shifted a little bit too far we had a little bit of more blue purple and just like that we've got this scene with this really dynamic framing which is already in the frame um, 
but we went and enhanced it by adding this yellow leaves here, making sure the color tones are there, and uh, enhancing the grass. So almost everything we did in the shot was about taking a single component, these leaves, this shirt, the highlights here, and enhancing it to make it the, the image as it was. So you saw when we looked at our primary, it was sort of blah and not interesting, but by enhancing all these things separately, we bring it all together and we've got this really great looking shot. This is another shot of the nuns. Uh, again, we had severe problems with their habits. So you can see here how much green, how much blue there is in it. So this is just a qualifier, making sure we're selecting that and shifting it pure white. Again, highlights right here. And then this is, you can see I had problems here. This is a little bit too yellowy green, so by adding this, I can shift this part here, and it also unfortunately grabbed a little bit of this, and I didn't bother cleaning it up, but it's close enough. And then we're making sure we had too much life in their skin tones here, so by pulling it back towards pink and desaturating some, we've uh, making sure we're staying in the correct color palette that we've been looking for the whole time. This is one of my favorite shots in the video. Um, we're going to ignore these two nodes at the end. This is just a denoise and then uh, a secondary node to add some more grain back into the image. Um, we're going to have them off for the, the sakes of looking at this. Uh, this shot, as it started out, was already very pretty, but um, a little bit less dynamic than we'd like. So what the big thing here is, one, adding those Luma highlights. So we're kicking up the effect of the, the sun streaming in. And then this sucker right here. So what we've done is we've added a vignette, but you can see, again, vignettes don't have to be just a circle around the edge of the screen. This is a very stylized, canted, narrow oval, and uh, we darken the outside exteriors um, by reversing the mat. And you can see how much this does to make sure our eyes go straight to her eyes as she looks up. And the effect is instant and dynamic and really takes a shot from a pretty shot to like a really dynamic moment. So that's just a quick look at a number of shots from Purity Rings Begin Again. Again, the focus here is on the small things that we've done to a number of these shots to sort of push them up and make them as great as they can be. I'm gonna try and pull some of these little things from some of the videos I work on in the future. Again, I really recommend all of you check out this video. It's a great music video. Um, just like everything from Young Replicant, he's one of those guys you should be watching. And hopefully you found that some of these little examples of small things you can take in your image and push them useful for not necessarily how you do a grade, but how you approach a shot and say, okay, yeah, we've balanced this. Okay, yeah, we've got the look on it. But you know, what else can we do if we've got the time to make this look as great as possible? And that's really the mindset I'm trying to get across here is, is what can you do as a colorist to make this shot as great as possible? And to tell the story that your director, your DP, and the rest of the crew is trying to tell. Thanks for watching. This is David Tresivia. Till next time.